All right, the topic of today's lesson is uh, going to be unit conversions. Uh, for the most part, you're in physics, so you should be able to convert units, but just in case you have some basic things, we'll take a look at just the, the initial setup and making sure you do know how to cancel. So we might just look at something really easy, like say in the, I don't know, let's say that uh, 15, 15 yards is equal to how many inches? All right, if, if you're not real familiar with conversions, all you have to do is to begin with, take what you've been given. Take what you've been given, write that down. 15 yards, draw a line, put an X, draw a line. So there's where we're going to start this out. Now, in order to do this, we just need to know our conversion factors. I don't know how many yards is in an inch. Well, actually I do, it's not that hard, but we're going to pretend like it's harder than that. So we're going to say, what do yards and inches have in common? Well, we'll say that yards and inches have feet in common. So I'm going to go from yards to feet and then from feet to inches is going to be my goal. So this is where I would be asking you how many feet are in a yard. And there's three feet. Your conversion factor is three feet in one yard. So in order to make the conversion, order to make the conversion, whatever is on top of the last step has to be on bottom of the next step. So our numbers are three and one. The only question is where does three go and where does one go? Well, on the next step, the one, the one has to go on the bottom because that's the only way it matches. And so the three has to go on the top. So on bottom we put one yard and on top we put three feet and then we can now, we're not done though, we need one more conversion so we'll put an X and we will draw another line and we want to convert two inches. So we come back in and we say okay well how many inches are in a foot? Well there's 12 inches for every one foot. All right, so we take a look at this. Where does the inches go, top or bottom of the next step? Well, if feet is on top of the last step, then we need feet on bottom. So when we make our decision, we're going to take one foot and put on the bottom. So on bottom, one foot. On top, we put our 12 inches. And now we're actually finished. When you see inches on the bottom, that's when we're actually finished with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put an equal sign down right here. And the bottom, 1 times 1 is 1. Across the top, 15 times 3 times 12. So we'll go 15 times 3 times 12. Gives us an answer of 540. And so that's a grand total of 500. 40 inches is the same thing as 15 yards. Don't know why you'd want to know that, but that would be what we'd have for an answer right there. All right, now the only thing you're going to see different in physics this year is going to be conversions of cubes and conversions of, well, conversions of squares and cubes and what's called rate conversions. And I don't know if you've ever done a rate conversion, but if you can do a conversion like we've just done, then you can do a rate conversion. So I'm going to do example E that's in your book. Example E actually asks you, it said a car is traveling 28 meters per second, and it wants to know, is this exceeding a speed limit of 55 miles per hour? So what I'm going to do is convert the meters per second to miles per hour. Now, typically in physics, it's going to be the exact opposite. We're going to work problems where they give you miles per hour. You're going to need to convert that to meters per second in order to work the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and start, though. So 28 meters per second, and I want to change that to miles per hour. And, of course, if you want to convert miles per hour, you just work it the opposite of what we're going to work this one. Here, you want to see the big secret to doing a rate conversion problem. When you go to work out the problem, write out 28 meters. Draw your line. Put your X. Draw your line. Oh, no. Where's the second at? Here's the big trick. The second just goes on the bottom of this step. 
So your 28 meters per second looks like 28 meters over seconds. To begin with, don't even worry about the seconds. Just convert meters to feet. So how do you convert meters to feet? Or excuse me, <clears throat> meters to miles? Uh, well, we have to convert to feet first. So there are 3.281 feet per every one meter. And then we come back over here and say that there is 5,280 feet for every one mile. Notice how our canceling works. The meter cancels, the feet cancels. So right now, if we stopped, our answer would be in miles per second. Well, I want it in miles per hour, so we just need one more line on here. Seconds is on bottom, so that's what we want to cancel. We want it to be an hour, so how many seconds are an hour? You might as well memorize it for physics. 3,600 seconds per hour. So if seconds is on bottom here, then seconds has to be on top out here. 3,600 seconds per one hour. Now if you look, the seconds cancel out, and you're left with miles over hours for our final answer. So we'll multiply out the top, 5280, excuse me, this is the bottom, 5280 times nothing, so 5280. On top, we've got 28, 28 times 3.281 times 3600 equals, woo, big number, 330725. So we'll divide that by 5280. And that's 62.6. So this is 62.6 miles per hour. So the question was, were you exceeding a 55 mile per hour speed limit? The answer is a yes, you are. All right. So let's teach you one more thing. So again, the, the most typical thing for you in physics would be to start with miles per hour and convert backwards to meters per second. All right, let's do one more type of conversion. We we'll call it a square or a uh, cube conversion. So let's do a square, square or cube conversions. Now, the easiest way to teach you this Let's say I gave you, oh, I don't know. If I gave you 18 inches and asked you to convert that to feet, how would you work that problem? You would start by writing 18 inches, draw your line, put your X, draw your line, and then how many inches are in a foot? Come on, you can do it. Use your training. 12, that's right. So where does the 12 go, on the top or the bottom of this step? So if I've got inches here, then my 12 inches has to go on bottom of the next step. So on bottom, I write 12 inches. On top, I write one foot, and I put my equal sign. The inches would cancel out. I'd have my foot on top. All right, so 18 times 1 is 18. Divide that by 12. Our answer is 18 over 12. So that's one and a half feet. So, no problems there. All right. So, what about then, what's going to be the difference if I said 18 inches square to feet square? Well, believe it or not, all you have to be able to do is the same thing as what you just did. So, we'll write 18 inches and we'll draw our line. Put her line, put her X. The only difference is this time we're doing squares. Y'all, this is pretty easy. All right, this is really pretty easy. All we have to do is just come in here and say, okay, if there's 12 inches per foot, then what if we're doing it with squares? Well, if we're doing it with squares, square everything. So if there's 12 inches in a foot, what's 12 squared? 144. So that means there's 144 inches square in a foot square. And we're done. That's all it is after, okay? And so now we go 18, divide by 144, 
and that's 0.125 feet squared. And there's our answer. If we wanted to convert cubes, all we would do is cube the 12. So if you want your conversion factors for cube conversions, let's say you're doing, how about feet cubed per meter cubed? All you have to do, your conversion factor, instead of being 3.281 feet per one meter, cube it. 3.281 cubed is 35.32. So that means there's 35.32 feet cubed for every meter cubed. That's all you have to do to work these problems. So work it like any other problem. And all you have to do is cube your conversion factors when you do the problem. That's it. That's the only trick to doing squared or cube conversions. All right. Uh, thank you for your time. Here's your nice smiley face. Mm, now I've always done smiley faces. No smiley faces today. Today we go. No. Frown sets the wrong example. How about I just go with I love you. Aww. That's almost sweet.